Hi, everyone. Steve Scott, and welcome to another edition of our Kaizen Online uh, Coaching and Learning Program. Uh, today, let's talk about uh, teaching progressively, teaching progression of skills. Okay. Start from A and hopefully you get to Z. And if you do it right, you probably will get to from A to Z. Okay. Um, what prompted me to do this video is I uh, was watching recently Ken Brink and his judo practice. Uh, Ken is a, a great judo coach here at Welcome Mat um, and, uh, in the Kansas City area and takes his coaching very seriously. And uh, he was he had been he and I had a discussion at, at one of his practices and he was telling me where he watched. He was watching a video of a uh, world class judo athlete do a particular throw. And he said, I, I know my kids can do that throw. He said, I know that they have it in them. I, that's it's kind of our style. We like doing that particular thing. Uh, but uh, the way that what he was doing, it was very advanced. It was obvious he had this this person had spent hours and hours practicing this move and in doing it on a high level. He said, so I need to work that so my kids will get it. How can I best start them? So we were kind of kicking ideas around. And sure enough, after a period of time, uh, Ken started uh, teaching that skill and where his kids could best understand it. He literally started them from the base, the A. Okay, he didn't start them to, to, to try to mimic exactly how that world-class judo athlete was doing it. He knew he had to change that so that his, his kids and his judo team could pick it up and, and, uh, and, and gain skill in it. And that's what he did. He, he, he progressively, and, he's, and they're still working on it, and they're going to get good at it because he's staying with it. You know, he's sticking with the program. So he is uh, he's really uh, he, he really took that to heart. You just don't you know. And, and of course, we all learn by watching YouTube and, and the Internet and watching other people, watching competitions, taking notes. I, I took vociferous numbers of notes. Or vociferous, is that the correct word? A lot of notes. Let's put it that way. Uh, I was vociferous in my, my enthusiasm for it. That's better. But uh, a huge number of notes all the time and stats and everything else. I'm a geek about that. And I think all coaches should be. If you're a coach, you're probably a geek about this stuff too. You're watching and you're making, if not mental notes, uh, physical notes, write it down. Uh, study, the, study the tapes of your kids and other people competing. So we learn from these things, but we don't mimic them exactly. We make it work for us. That's what functional coaching is about. Make it work for you. Make it work for your team. Okay. Uh, there are some things that are appropriate for some age levels. Some things aren't. If you saw some really cool move at a, at a training camp, but it's dangerous, don't teach it to your kids until they are or until they're older, physically mature enough or skilled enough, certainly skilled enough, or, or kids or adults even, to be able to handle that type of a skill. You saw something on the Internet or YouTube about uh, a, a great technique or whatever, and you want to just like Ken did, make it work for your people. OK, so so don't just mimic that move and, and also make sure you do it safely. So here are some things I jotted down about coaching and progression of skills. So just just some ideas here. Um, first of all, properly plan your activity. I think that goes about in just general coaching and no matter what. And teach these skills in proper, correct progression. OK, it could be a basic throw, arm lock, pin choke, leg lock, whatever it is you're teaching. Uh, but, but teach the fundamentals first. And remember, world-class skill, and I've said this many times, and you're probably bored of hearing me say it, world-class skill, elite-level skill, really is, is nothing more than fundamentals done to their full potential. You're making, you as that athlete have made that move work for you to where you have a very high ratio of success in a, in a variety of different circumstances. That is world-class skill. And it, it all starts with the basics. So progression of skill is you've got to, like I said earlier, you've got to start at A before you can get all the way through the alphabet to get to Z. OK, so um, as a coach, think it through, just like Ken Brink did. Think it through. Develop some lesson plans that progressively will get your kids or your adults, or your, your students to that point you want to get them there, to, to where you want to get them. So so the lesson plans are really important, you know, and over an overall outline. You know, the overall outline is kind of like your uh, uh, your big picture, okay? And your lesson plans are the things you'll be doing just about at, every, at the practice. And, 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 you know, where you want to have a pretty good, really good idea on your outline, your big picture, what you want to, the goal you want to achieve, that lesson plan may have to change from time to time depending on circumstances. Um, it, you know, don't just 
change it because you want to, but your lesson plan may have to, you may have to adapt that lesson plan. Um, if, if the people who show up don't, you know, just aren't ready for that movie you want to teach that night. So, so change it, make it work for them. Um, keep, keep good written records. Keep, keep an idea of what you're teaching when you've taught it. So you can add to that. So you can progressively teach better skills and a higher level of skill. So that, that, I always referred back to my lesson plans that I, they don't have to be copious notes, just jot them down so you know where you've been, so you know where you can go. So in, in terms of coaching, make sure that your students are physically able to do the skill you want them to do, okay? Um, their fitness level should be there. Um, their their age, it should, is it age appropriate? You know, are you going to teach a, a very nasty strangling technique to five-year-olds? Well, I hope you said no, because I'm not. But, uh, you know, we're going to teach something that's age appropriate, okay, and it can be done safely. So make sure you do that. You know, follow good safety standards. Um, that goes along with provide good, proper, competent instruction. You know, you should know that move. Study that move before you introduce it to your students. So you have some answers when they ask you those questions, okay? You don't have to be a master of that move. You don't have to be a total expert, but you have to certainly know it well enough technically, mechanically, tactically, to be able to relay that information to your students so it makes sense to them and so it's functional for them. So, you know, make sure, you know, uh, you, you know the move yourself, okay? And then also sell that move to them. Tell them why it works. Tell them how it works. Sell them on the idea that get them enthused about the idea of doing that particular technique, okay? Uh, not every technique is for everybody. And, and you know, keep that in mind when you're coaching. But at the same time, a job as a coach, we have to sell what we're sell, what we're doing. We have to sell what we're coaching. And that's the, that's a mark of a good coach. So, um, that, that, you know, that's in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of the way to do it. So, and, and progressively moving up, tell them, tell your students why you're doing it, when you're doing it. And, and, and as they're getting better, you just keep adding layers, keep adding more to it. And, and, and they will, they will, they'll go along with you. They understand. They have brains in their head, just like you figured it out yourself. Um, some other thing. Uh, boo, 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 uh, in a progressive manner, I'm just going over my notes here, everybody. Um, you should be, when I talk about adequately prepared and lesson plans, you don't need to go overboard on uh, writing everything down, but you should. Okay, you should write things down. So, as I said earlier, you know uh, where you were at a particular time in teaching something, uh, and you know to add to it, okay? Uh, it's kind of a little journal as, as a coach. I always did. I have a number of them that I still look back at when I taught something in 1985 or whatever it was, and it's, it's interesting reading for me now, but you know what? Uh, I still use it. I still use a lot of those notes, and um, I hope you do too. So when your lesson plans, they, they, they serve as a good um, um, diary of coaching, as it were. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, and understand why you're teaching something. What, what's the purpose of it? Okay, uh, let's look at it. Uh, let's let's take judo. Okay, uh, it's a subject near and dear to many of our hearts. Um, Jiro Kano founded judo primarily to be a physical form of physical education, and it is an excellent form of physical education. So, are you teaching judo for physical education? Okay, yeah, you are. All, all, all of it should be. Okay, but then are you do you, are you training athletes? When I'm training athletes, and I have before I used to train a lot of athletes, I don't do that so much anymore. My younger coaches do, but I still kick in and help. What's the purpose? Why is that? Is that training session? Are, are we in a, in a periodization, a particular training cycle when we're training for a particular national or international tournament or regional competition? Um, why are we there? You know, we're honing the skills for a competitive situation. Uh, it's no longer just physical education now. We're taking it to another level, um, not necessarily a higher level, just a different level when we're coaching for winning tournaments. OK, um, when you coach competitive athletes, do not be ashamed to enjoy women winning. Now, that doesn't mean to be a jerk about it. Hold it over people. Uh, I don't subscribe to the fact that do anything to win. You know, uh, I, I stay within the rules, within the things that are, that are fundamentally, ethically, morally sound to do. Don't use steroids. Don't use drugs. Don't cheat. Uh, don't don't be a dirty fighter. But at the same time, if you're coaching athletes, coach them to win. 
Okay, if they're they're training to win in competition, that is what you're. That's the focus. It's no longer just physical education. It's now gone on to another facet, like I said, another level. Not necessarily always a higher level, but a different level of training to win. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, you also have students that um, want just want recreation. That's where the physical education part. That's good to teach them those skills, but they want to come in and just get a good workout with their children, adults, whatever it is. Um, judo again and jujitsu or sambo, but, but certainly judo we're talking a lot about here is that it is so wonderful because you can adapt it to any group you want to work with. Okay. Um, are you going to be having a group of, let's say you have a group of, of middle-aged and, and, and older middle-aged people in your class or in your group, are you going to be running them through the same type of workouts? You're going to be running your 18 and 25 year olds who want to compete in the nationals. No, you shouldn't be anyway. Uh, and I hope you're not. Uh, I know I'm not. So as a coach, we have to adapt to that. Now, also, and we've talked about this before in some of our videos, uh, you just have so much time in the day. You have so many days in the week. You have so many hours that you can work on. And you have so much, so much mat time available. You might be teaching in a, uh, in a community center like I did for many years, and you have specific parameters in your time. You have to really juggle that time to know and be honest about your program, what your goals are for that program. There are some athletes, there are some coaches, I should say, that, spe that, that, that they, they, uh, they specialize just in competitive judo, okay? And that's fine. That's what they do. And everybody knows it when you walk in the door. But for the most part, for the most part, judo clubs in the, certainly the United States and probably all over the world, I would say, share this as well, um, we have a wide variety of people who walk in the door. We can't just say this club's only for winners. This club's only for competitors. Uh, we accept everybody. So we as coaches have to adapt to that. So again, that's progression of skills. Jumping back to the original subject that we talked about, um, you're not going to be teaching that 60-year-old um, uh, recreation judo guy who just started about six months ago. You're not going to be teaching him the same skills you're going to be teaching that 18-year-old uh, young man who is training for the national championships. Uh, just, just realize that and be able to work with that. And a coach, we need to do that. We need to up the game to be able to be able to work with all those different types of people. So understand why you're teaching what you're teaching and when you're teaching it. Another facet is self-defense. Certainly in judo, we don't see that as much anymore these days, but we do. But I know that uh, in, in our Shingitai Jiu-Jitsu, that is a, certainly an important facet of, of Jiu-Jitsu to us in the self-defense. So, but I'm not going to be teaching uh, my self-defense students the same things I'm going to be teaching my competitive Judo or Sambo athletes. Uh, they're going to be different practices. So you have to, as a coach, you have to remember that and, and do those things. So you can't have everybody in the same group. Uh, they, they have different in, interests. Um, as a coach, try to provide as many different avenues as you can, whether it be recreation uh, and physical education, uh, self-defense, uh, or the uh, competitive, uh, you know, athletic training in that in that regard. So uh, you have to wear a lot of hats as a coach. But again, it all starts back to progression of skills. Start them on fundamentals, keep them on the fundamentals, and what you do with those fundamentals is how they become more elite level, higher end competition type things is make those fundamentals work for that individual or that group. How can that work best for you? Just coming back to what Ken, Breck, Ken Brink was doing earlier, talking about him earlier, he's, he was gra grappling with the idea, how can I make this skill, which is a really elite level skill, work for my 9 and 10, 12-year-old kids? How can I introduce it to them so that they will get it and they will understand it and be able to achieve those goals I want to set out for them? So they can technically do those things and use them and apply them functionally. And he's working on that. That's just good coaching. So I, I urge you to do the same. You probably do the same thing, but I'm just throwing these out. Um, just a few other things before we uh, go on this. Okay. And this, uh, um, when you do teach, break it down, break it down. So it is understandable. Okay. Show the move, uh, the whole move at regular speed and slow it down a bit and then piece it out. Okay. Piece it out. Um, you know, this, this part here, this part there, and they all come back and then bring them back together. Okay. 
Don't take forever to talk and yap on about the move. Uh, make it short, make it sweet, be succinct in teaching. But don't be curt. Don't take shortcuts. Teach it adequately and fully. But at the same time, know that you have to introduce it, break it down into parts, put it back into a whole thing again, and then let them practice it. And then lots of practice time. Don't expect them to get it right off. Expect not something in, in hours, weeks, or days, a long time. It will take a long time to practice and, and drill on it. Create drills that will reinforce that particular skill, tactic, or whatever you're working on. So drill training, structured drill training is fundamental to teaching a progression of skills. Okay, Have some drills as they're getting better. Have drills along the way that will increase them to the next level of, of expertise. So drill training is really essential, and, and you can invent drills. You can make drills up on any aspect of, of any part of what we do, and you can make good drills for it to, to, to reinforce and teach and reinforce the skills for your students at different levels, okay? So there's more to drill training than just do banging out a whole bunch of Uchikomi and, and then doing Rondori. There's a lot more to practice than that, and that skill, the, uh, the structured training is based on, on those drills, and, and how you can make those drills work. So anyway, uh, provide a, a good prog progression of skills, if I could say that out, sorry about that. But uh, we're, we're talking about progression of skill here. And start from A and eventually work to Z. Maybe not everybody will get to Z, but somewhere along the line, they'll find it either works for them or it doesn't, and you hope, you hope as a good coach you can make it work for them. Um, so anyway, that's it so much on progression of skills. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time.